Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Lowman02. I'm going to do a quick rundown of a 2-1 deck that we just ran in the Chainsaw Massacre. It is a Doomsday Storm Pile. Um, so our first matchup is against Michelle Wong, which we're kind of happy with because um, so she we, we expect that she's on a Planeswalker Ramp deck that she's been testing with over the last couple of days. Um, I think this is a relatively good matchup for a deck like Storm uh, because she's not running a lot of counter spells and really she just you know she acquires value over over besting players over time. Um, and she really doesn't interact on the level that we're playing the game, um, which is, is beneficial to us. Um, as you'll find later, you know, opponents that can make us discard or counter our spells, our critical spells, um, can tend to beat us. Um, so we have a very strong keep here. Um, you know, it may not look like it. I think it was a one lander to start off with. Um, but that's really all you need when you have multiple uh, one mana cantrips. And really what I'm banking on is those multiple one-mana cantrips to see me like four or five cards by turn two and get me into my lands, and then allow C Beyond uh, to filter out my draw uh, to an even greater extent. Um, whether that's get, getting lands or getting spells uh, and mana, um, you know, it's one or the other. And I just, you know, that's a lot of hidden information, so I don't really know yet what I'm going to use C Beyond for. It's either going to be mana or more cards, or more spells. Because um, like I said, I mean, we're on a storm pile. Uh, we see a Seder Wayfinder come out. So, of note here, um, we have seen her hand with the Gitaxian Probe. Um, she kept it based upon the power of um, Natural Order, um, but it's not a fast Natural Order. So, in her starting hand, she had like a Wall Blossom's Natural Order, and I, I, maybe the Seder Wayfinder, I can't remember. Um, the Seder, unfortunately for her, I believe, whiffs um, in finding a land. Let me just double check real fast. Yeah, whiffed on finding any lands. Um, but we know next turn she's going to have a Primeval Titan. Um, you know, what we just saw with our um, C Beyond was, um, or what we are about to see with our C Beyond is a Pact of Negation, which we could utilize here because we can Dark Ritual and then use the two remaining mana um, to generate blue and uh, pay for it uh, upon our upkeep. Um, we have not to because we kind of think that, you know, even if Primeval Titan gets like the worst, which, you know, in my thought is probably like, you know, uh, Dark Depths combo, um, I don't think it's fast enough. To, to beat the draw we're on, especially with the Nightscape in play, like, you know, our, a lot of our spells are going to be cast a lot cheaper. Um, so we end up playing it out. Uh, we keep the Strategic Planning and the Brainstorm, and kind of hoping for a fetch with the Brainstorm. Um, we're just pumping the Jace right now. Um, we don't need to recur any of that stuff. Kind of what we're thinking is next turn, we're going to have a big turn with Dark Ritual, um, using the Jace to, to get that. Uh, we don't do it, go for it yet, though. We want to get more lands on board. Um, we do get our land, um, hit our Brainstorm to kind of smooth out our draw, and then we end up uh, putting, I believe, the Mana Flare on top. The Mana Flare ends up making a very big for turn for us this game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I think this may be a misplay on her part. Um, the Nightscape Familiar is infinitely more important to my game plan than the Baleful Strix is. The Baleful Strix, you know, I play the Baleful Strix to tempt that. Well, one, I want to cantrip, and two, to tempt that play to remove that over the Nightscape Familiar, um, because I need the Nightscape really right now. On a limited re amount of resources, limited amount of lands, um, I need that to uh, reduce uh, casting costs from cards like uh, Forbidden Alchemy. Um, and in this case, Mana Flare, which ends up leaving me the one crucial land that I need open on this turn. Recast um, Dark Ritual after casting it once, plant the Mana Flare, generating uh, two mana off of the blue. Uh, Dark Petition, Frantic Search, to find even better cards, put my flashback card, Forbidden Alchemy, and Duress in the graveyard. Cast a uh, Desperate Ritual, Grim Tutor, um, I believe for a Past in Flames, yep. And then use all, all of the mana cards. The Frantic Search is essentially a mana card with Mana Flare in play. Um, cast on her Mana Morphos, and I believe we end up Dark Petitioning for... Yeah, no, yeah, we do. We Dark Petition, get the Tendrils, and do, I believe, put a negative two at this point. <clears throat> so, Michelle, a couple things. Um, I think you utilize your Wasteland, but I think, you know, it was almost like your plan was kind of like double-edged. Like, you used the Wasteland to limit my resources, but you targeted my um, my silly uh, silly Strix. I think if you lose Titan here, you're still in a good spot. You have one man land, plus a Kessig Wolf Run, plus your 1-1. Your one -one. I mean, any, any threat, like even a 1-1 one -one with a Kessig Wolf Run is a threat. Um, so I think if your plan is to wasteland me, to limit me on resources, you may also want to give strong consideration to, uh, killing the Nightscape Familiar. Um, and keep in mind, too, you know, it's going to leave Garrick at two, which means I can't attack it lethal, for lethal with my Strix. Um, 
if I you know don't opt to block the prime time, which is you know pretty much like a one percent play that I don't block the prime time, that thing is you know it's got to be dealt with. Um, you have a tutor on a stick with with Garrick, so I mean you know you can start pumping out one ones uh, tutoring, and um, you know I, then again I was I was also high on cards, um, but a lot of my cards don't interact with planeswalkers. Like I'm not this deck is essentially like it's always in a race. Um, it's it's investment 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 and then it just wins randomly like out of nowhere. Um, but it has to find all the right pieces. It's amassing the components uh, continually. Um, but, it, you know, it really can't stop anything that anyone else is doing until it gets into the board plan. Um, so board plan for this. Let's go ahead and check it out if we go into game two of our first match. Okay, so sideboard. I don't think we sideboarded in this matchup. I think we felt pretty comfortable with it. Yeah, no, we left the sideboard as is. So we see um, Myriad Landscape. We go ahead and Inquisitioner. Interesting choice. Take the Corsair Crucifix. It's a lot easier to tendril someone out with a deck specifically like this. It's not like, you know, hugely redundant um, from uh, from 20 than it is, you know, 22 to 24. Um, plus the Corsair is an actual threat. She uh, she is fairly lucky and, and draws a very good top deck, a castable Planeswalker. Um, we get pinged for one by her fella. And then she goes and she she draws another one, so her top deck is treating her very well. Um, we get a Gideon Jura here, which is a massive threat. Um, we go ahead and cast our thirst for knowledge, uh, ditching uh, the past and flames and the uh, and the time spiral because they're both way out of reach right now. Um, we go ahead and repeal one of the tokens just to draw and try to find more land. Right now we're kind of just hoping to hit land drops. So we're not doing so hot in that department. Now we get very lucky here and find a thing in the ice. Um, and what we're thinking our line is going to be is on her turn during attack, so she's very close to killing us. Um, so if she turns on the Raging Ravine, that becomes a 4-4 upon attack. She can make it fly with Elsbeth, um, making it a 7-7, plus have a Gideon, which is a 6-6, plus two one ones. So technically, I think she actually has lethal in play. I mean, I, I could unfavorably block and not go to dead. Um, but she has, she has very favorable attacks, and has me dead in two turns. If Dead in one turn if I do not block with the thing in ice. Um, or dead in two turns um, if I do. Um, so we're thinking our line's going to be is, is um, and really Factor Fiction makes this viable, is we're going to Dark Ritual on her turn during attacks, um, then tap with our, our Watery Grave, then utilize red mana off of our Volcanic Island uh, to make blue-blue uh, or blue-black mana, probably blue-blue, um, to, to cast uh, our Alpha Mana Morphos, drawing into another card. Um, and then the plan is to cast um, Frantic Search to untap some of our lands. Um, and then, you know, after going through all those cards and wasting all those cards, we plan on casting Factor Fiction to basically get them back. Um, with the Past and Flames in the Graveyard, really what we're looking for is just ways of producing large, large amounts of mana. Um, so we see her go for it, which, you know, makes sense. I mean, like, I don't think I ostensibly think that my opponent can, like, turn out a thing in the ice the very turn it comes into play. This deck, though, I mean, it's what it does. It's why the card's in here. I mean, because it just it offers a lot of tempo, um, and, it, and it combos out very well with what we're doing, you know. So it's it's a fine creature in that in its own right. Um, as you can see, we go ahead and do what we said we we're gonna do. We flip our thing, um, end up taking the larger pile, I believe. Yeah, she doesn't want us to get her Gideon. Um, we make a mistake here. We should have. I, I didn't check the Elsbeth first. I didn't see she was on eight. I should have just attacked her face. Um, that would have made storming off a lot easier. We go ahead and get the Gideon regardless with the uh, Cabal Ritual off of our uh, Seagate Oracle. We're kind of hoping to, to storm her out next turn. Um, she activates uh, Celestial Colonnade, attacks in. We basically bought ourselves like three turns with, with this line of play. Or more. Uh, we find the Seething Song here. We're looking for a, just a ton of mana. We're looking for large mana production. Um, we go ahead and Seething Song, uh, cast the Cloud of Fae to open up our mana, um, to basically transmute the red mana into other sorts of our blue and black mana. Um, start going through the graveyard using uh, the Ritual effect. Mana Morphos. Really what we're looking for is an untap capability here. Um, we end up bricking on our uh, Tainted Pact, but we do find um, our Mana Flare. So we're thinking, all right, we didn't win it this turn. You know, we kind of missed. You know, and that happens. But we do have our mana flare, and we're on a an ungodly amount of lands right now. So I don't feel disadvantaged from this point. I feel like actually, and when I draw a Snapcaster, I'm like, all right, we got this. The game's over. Um, we cast under Nightscape, making Snapcaster cost one, Time Spiral at a reduced rate of five. 
untap, um, find, you know, just a whole boatload of cantrips. Really right now all we're doing is looking for tutors and ways to, um, to get our, uh, our tendrils. Um, strategic planning, we're just building up storm count. Snap back our, uh, Craster Snapcaster, recast Snap on Snapcaster. Snapcaster, no, actually we didn't even Snapcaster again. We cast the, uh, Demonic, or yeah, Diabolic Intent, and then cast a Lethal Tendrils for, like, I don't know, like, negative 30 damage. Negative, yeah. Negative 30 should be exactly. Um, so that's our first game against Michelle. Um, you know, fairly fortunate, but, uh, Thing in the Ice definitely, uh, earning its weight in gold. That was, a definitely a huge blowout play. Um, but good games, and appreciate it, Michelle. Our second game is against Player Dots, which is kind of lamenting because he's on Grixis Control, which is going to be a tougher matchup for this deck, especially pre-board. Um, okay, so we see this hand, and we're like, you know, we got to keep it, because um, we have two tutor effects. We have the ability to get down low on cards to make Infernal Tutor a live card. We have a way of filtering through our draw um, with Dak Faden. Um, we have Turnabout, which can just generate tons of mana. Um, you know, and we're going to be relatively fast. We have a Chrome Mox um, in hand. I believe I'm not mistaken. Like we end up chrome moxing. We don't we don't hit a land our first turn around to play, and we end up yeah ditching. So we see the snapcaster and we ditch the um, turnabout. So we're thinking we're not we're not going to be on a land heavy draw because we just missed on lands. Um, so we ditch the turnabout um, and set up to cast a tainted pact so we can set up Jace the following turn. He cast um, a Grim Lava Man. We go ahead and go for our Tainted Pack. And it makes us a little nervous when we see Island Island top. So we end up just sticking with the Blood Crypt so we can get Dak online. Uh, filter through two. Keep the land. Ditch the Frantic Search and the uh, Storm. Or for, yeah, the Storm. We end up losing our Dak. Um, you know, which is, eh, it happens. You know, he's down to three cards at this point. We go ahead and cast out the Augur. Uh, just looking for action. We find good action in the in mana production. So we have tons of mana production, which is nice because, like, one of the problems you run into with cards like Infernal Tutor is that when you're using cantrips, sometimes you can just get landlocked with Infernal Tutor. You just draw too many lands. I mean, even on a 29 land deck, that tends to, that can happen. Um, we'll go ahead and pass it. And our plan is, is we're going to try to tie up his mana on his end step by casting Snapcaster in this attack phase um, and uh, forcing a counter out of him. Uh, so if he doesn't counter this, he loses his Grim Lava Mancer and we get to Tainted Pact. He does counter it. So we're like, okay, you know, that worked out. Would have rather had him tap a little bit lower. And maybe it would have been smarter to wait till his end step to see if he cast a threat out or not. I don't know. Um, we go ahead and generate all our mana. Um, go for our Infernal Tutor. We get... Um, we end up getting the Time Spiral. Because we need more mana than what we've got. Even if we went past in Flames, we wouldn't have quite enough to keep it going. We were like one short on Past in Flames to do the Cabal Ritual and then have red mana left over to do the Seething Song and go into our sequence. Um, so we're just short. Um, so we go with this sequence because we're thinking, you know, it's it's going to show us a lot more cards. Um, and if we get, really what we wanted to get with that Time Spiral is at least one discard spell. We don't. You know, we get Is It Charmed here and the game's over. Um, we'll let it run for a bit because we kind of just play it out because, you know, we do have a Tainted Pack Man and we're like, I mean, we get it. We see a Liliana though and it's like, you know, it's over. Uh, we'll play it out until we, we concede it, but there's not much commentary from this point. We lost as soon as um, our Cabal Ritual got hit. And really, like, we're in a bad way when we didn't hit discard off of the uh, draw seven. The discard was really crucial to, to making that, that play happen. Um, yeah, for lulls, we cast the Doomsday. And I think we actually ponder it for a moment, and then we're like, oh, wait, there's a Liliana in play. Like, the Tainted Packs can come out of my hand. I can't, you know, ditch my whole library and do, like, some crazy lab man shenanigans. Um, with my pile that I'm capable of. So we lose this first match. Wait. Moto may have just crashed, folks. Did you crash? Sorry about this. I'm sure if you uh, if you play Moto enough, you know this happens. Okay. Well... Let's go on a pause. All right, we're back here, folks. Um, we finally got the game to unfreeze. Um, we'll go to game two at this point. So this is a significantly boarded match. Uh, before we start, we'll go over the board plan. Um, our board plan at this point um, is to um, is to take out not Noxious Revival. And one of the reasons why is it's a card disadvantage card. Um, 
you know, and it, it, it just, it doesn't do much. It, in, a, in a fighting against a deck that is all about one for one exchange of cards. I don't think you want cards that are just, you know, it, they, they are card disadvantage uh, like this. And it's not even really fast unless I can trip into whatever I'm getting. Let's take that out. I'll take out the Chrome Mox. Um, because again, it's card disadvantage. It's going to put me down cards. And, um, and, and really like that, that card plus Pentad Prison may come on anyways. Uh, Pentan Prism, kind of the same thing. Like this is that's another card that is kind of close to the chopping block. And when I'm fighting someone who has a lot of counters, I don't want in there because you know it's just oftentimes a blank because you oftentimes don't want to tap your mana for this thing because sometimes your lands tapping of your lands generates more mana than the artifact itself can. So like well lands in this deck can often produce multiple mana on a turn given like a mana flare or a high tide or a rain and filth. Um, Pentad Prism cannot. It, it only cycles mana. Um, so take it out. Um, it is kind of decent tech against like Blood Moon decks and like, you know, stuff like that. Um, we also end up taking out our Lab Man. Uh, we leave in the Doomsday because we're planning on storming him. Um, I don't think Lab Man's good against someone who's got like, you know, uh, like a billion burn spells that do two damage. Um, you know, we saw the, the kicked one. Um, you know, we saw Arc Trail. Um, it's just not great. Um, I don't like that wing kind of against a control deck because, I mean, there's just so much that can go wrong, you know, or my sequence, you know, sometimes may be for Doomsday that like, I can't win on the turn I do it and I got to pass it back. And this is not the sort of deck you can do that against. Like, it, the thing, it just won't work. So we take that down as well. Um, and I believe, I think that's it for the cuts. And then we bring in is a Thoughtseize, a Miser's Thoughtseize, um, and a Red Elemental Blast, and uh, a... Uh, um, uh, Pyroblast is what comes in. So we, we, we swap out three cards. All right, we see our opener. We couldn't play that. That was like a one-lander. It was an Urborg. This deck really needs blue mana to run. Much better hand here on six. Although, of note, that did have some of our hate in it. The first hand did, but we just, we're never going to cast it. Um, all right, we see a tap land. That's good. That's good. So... What the plan here is, is we're going to use the Brainstorm uh, to try to find more lands. I believe, uh, correction, we're going to use the Sea Beyond. Or we should. Yep, we find our land, which is great. That means we our Brainstorm is live in the following turn. Uh, so we go ahead and we, we're going to pass it back. We want to, you know, it's, it's a little weaker to do this on uh, on his turn. But, you know, what I want to do, what I want to do here is, is, is force him to make a misplay if he's going to. Um... We end up pitching the Brainstorm there because we want the cards on top. I don't want to fetch right now. Um, I, I want that... Uh, I'm sorry, we cast it, but we don't we don't fetch. We wanted all those cards. So what my thinking is here is on his end step, I'm going to cast Factor Fiction and tie up his mana. Um, and then on my following turn with um, the Tutor I have in hand and the High Tide, I figure I can win. Um, we get complicated, which is great. It's kind of, you know, we kind of expected this. Um... And we go to our turn, we cast our Tide, um, go ahead and cast the Cloud of Fae, untapping both of our islands, making mana, essentially. Um, cast Desperate Ritual, Grim Tutor, and we get Forest of Will here. And we're just like, really? Oof. And we really can't win. Um, you know, we really needed it. I mean, like, it was basically Force of Will or Bust. And, I, you know, I hate losing that way, but, um, you know, sometimes they have it, you know? Sometimes they have it, but I think it was the right line of play. Because um, if that resolves, we win. Um, automatically. So what we were actually going for there um, was going to be our past in flames. And then in order to get into our past in flames, we we're going to utilize our, our last tutor while it was on the stack um, to cast um, while the past in flames is on stack, cast uh, remaining tutor um, to get um, uh, can't think right now, uh, frantic search. Um, frantic search allowing us to untap generating mana off the tide mana and then recast all of our stuff in the graveyard, which includes like two tutors um, and, and, I, and even another tide. You know, the tide would have been, you know, triple mana um, as opposed to double mana um, on each of the islands. So we, we had it if we hadn't gotten countered there. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, we, we just we didn't make it. And uh, we get beat to death here by the uh, the torrential gear. Like, I'm joking with him. I cast the meditate kind of trolling. I said, hey, why'd you counter? I was just giving you I was giving you a time walk because I can't win from this point. It's, it's not possible. Um, well, I, maybe if he had junk in his hand, but we know his hand, and it's just, it's chock full of counters, and, uh, he's got this torrent gear off. He's got a threat, and he's got, like, two to three counter spells in hand right now. So, uh, yeah, we die. A horrible death. Um, all right, our last game is against, uh, Red White Blitz. Um, and I, I'm fine with this matchup. I think it's a, a 
a fairly good matchup for Storm. Um, we have a decent board against it, too, because sometimes they can just be really fast. Put Wolves at the bottom. We're just looking for land at this point. Um, solid keep. Uh, see a Dragon Master Outcast come out. Cool. That's not going to be great for a long time, especially in a deck like that. It's going to take six turns for it to even become a reality, which, you know, I'm fishing this deck around six. You know, it's, it's pretty average. It can do as fast as three, but, I mean, you know, when it's, when it's fighting against someone, it tends to be around six. Um, so he's got the Dwarven Blast Miner, which involves a lot of play around on our part. You know, we let him, we figure he's got a burn spell, and we're like, dude, if you want to burn off our 1-3 that got us a card, go ahead. I'm, I'm totally comfortable with that. We grab the fetch here, uh, put the rest on the bottom, uh, because we want to have uh, the availability to draw, um, or correction, to, to fix our red. We need red to get that Desperate Ritual online. Uh, we also don't want any mountains in the deck, so it's going to take some play around here, because the um, Dwarven Miner is, you know, is on his, his team over there. The one thing I don't like is that he's attacking in with the Dwarven Miner. I think you need to leave it untapped so that, you know, you can tie... Because he's not using all that mana. If he was using all his mana, I'd understand attacking with it um, on this board. But I think you want to leave the option available to um, to mine us if we uh, if we set it up that way. And we kind of miss with this. We get a uh, Chain of Vapor. Um, we'll go ahead and cast out another one of our, like, 1-3 crappy cards that draw us another card. Uh, we do find a very good card, though, in Dark Petition. Um, so we're very close. Really what we need right now is one additional black-red mana. Um, and we can go off. Yeah, we see a Beetleback Chief. Like, these are mono fair cards. Um, we metal, metal note here, get another land, and we, we're kind of just waiting. We, we put that outcast back in hand just because we don't know we're going to get this land, and, um, we don't want to start getting, like, 5-5 five, five flyers. And we'll block all day here. I mean, if he wants to burn it out with the Grim Lava Mancer, I'm, I'm fine with that. This card is not in this deck to really attack. Um, all right, we find our fetch land there, and, and now it's it's game. Um, we're on, like, almost infinite mana, and we really only need, like I said, like one red generally to start off our sequences in this deck. Uh, we go ahead and turn about here. Um, you'll note we didn't cast our, our young Pyromancer. Um, it's frankly not necessary here. Past in Flames, and then make a whole ton of mana. The Cabal Ritual, we put there with the Metal Note, the Desperate Ritual, um, the Turnabout, you know, basically working as a filter for our mana because we don't want all that red and black mana. We want mostly black and blue mana. Uh, he's got nothing in hand. We get Probe, Duress, Impulse, and that's the end of the game. Um, we just hit Lethal on Storm. So we go ahead and tutor with our Dark Petition, which is in the graveyard and is live due to the Past in Flames, and then uh, kill our opponent, Golden Wind. Uh, with lethal uh, tendrils. Okie doke. We'll go to game two. <clears throat> okay, good hand here. So we have a solid one mana can trip. We do need to find land with this hand. We're kind of hoping. We're on the draw, so it's like ideally, if I'm on the play, I want two one mana can trips to keep a one lander. But on the play, you know, I'm generally comfortable with one can trip and one land. And we don't find it, but we did get an additional cantrip. So we go ahead and opt here, uh, putting Strix on the bottom and drawing Island. So we make make our make make our land drop the next turn. Uh, we go ahead and cast CB on, looking for lands really. Uh, put back, um, I think it was the Time Spiral, which is it's nonsense at this point in time. Um, we go ahead and cast on our Goblin Electromancer, and the plan is to taint it back on his turn. And we're kind of hoping he goes to burn it out. We can taint it back in response. Uh, we keep the preordain because you know. It, it, it's fine. Like it's, it's we're not gonna. Th this does have five duplicate cards in it, uh, five islands and uh, five snow islands, which means that you know we're not live forever. We can't just draw the whole deck with tainted pact. <clears throat> so we metamorphose, cast the auger off that, getting our island, which was good. Find a strategic planning, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we go to strategic plan. And I believe, yeah, we take the Grim. The reason we take the Grim um, is because we have the Dark Ritual, and this hand's going to be hard to dump. We don't want to really cast and meditate, and Pact of Negation is, is, is tough because it's a brick in this matchup, and um, it's, it's very tough to ditch um, so you can use in Fertile Tutor, even though it's a much easier casting cost, uh, mana casting cost card. Find a Chrome Box. What we end up doing is putting the Dark Ritual under it, um, which is kind of odd, but, you know, it allows us to cast the Grim Tutor, and it puts us up on mana for the next turn. Um, we cast Visions Beyond, because we don't want to cast it next turn. We're kind of just looking for more land. We find it. Um, just for F6 value, we, we do this here. We probably should have done it his uh, end step, so we didn't get, you know, like, I don't know, like, 
ruination or something. I don't know. Not that I think that was a card he would have brought in because like he didn't he didn't see a lot of uh, uh, non basics last game. Um, so we cast our Tide. Um, we go ahead and tap all of our lands, play on our Candelabra. Michelle, like I know we talked about Candelabra actually. This is where Candelabra is good. This is what it does in the deck. Um, it just it's a doubling cube or a tripling cube or a quadrupling cube in the deck. Uh, we cast Mystical Teachings out of the graveyard. I believe we end up finding our our turnabout. We meditate first. Uh, we go ahead and brainstorm. Put back the lands. Cast turnabout. Generating more mana. Cast Peer Through Depths. Find our repeal. Portent's too slow here. We don't want Portent at this point in time. Um, bounce back one of the soldiers, draw an additional card, play on the Anticipate, and then I believe we find here what we need. So we find Diabolic Intent. Really, Snapcaster or Diabolic Intent did it here. Um, because Snapcaster could have done a Tainted Pact or a Grim uh, Tutor. Um, but we don't need all the Storm off of it. So, you know, we, we get... Uh, actually, I think this is perfect lethal on Storm. Uh, we could have gone further, obviously. We use the Snapcaster pile as opposed to the um, Diabolic Intent pile. Um, or if we wanted to cast out our um, Seagate Oracle here, we could have, and Pact of Negation did even, um, and then we could have stormed out for like four to six more damage. Um, but yeah, we end up putting him to zero, um, and that's, uh, that's the game. So that was our experience with Storm in the 100-card uh, Singleton, the Chainsaw Massacre event. Um, very, very fun deck. Uh, pretty cool deck, too. Like, I think it's kind of unique. I haven't seen anyone else play a deck like this whatsoever in Storm, or in, in 100 Card Singleton. I mean, obviously Storm is a thing in, like, you know, Vintage Legacy, even Modern. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's a tough archetype when you're only playing with single copies of cards. Uh, you're not playing Commander where, like, you have a, like a Commander like Tassiger that can support Storm very easily, or like, uh, Dreddy. Not Dreddy, uh, I forget the card's name. The Goblin guy that's black-red. Um, so, you know, you're, you're dealing with a, a lot of, uh, a lot more hidden information, a lot more, um, entropy in, in the game state that you have to manage, um, you know, and uh, I was kind of upset we didn't get our, uh, our uh, to get bring our, our Madcap Experiment uh, Platinum Empyrean uh, board um, in, but Chaos, if uh, we, we do meet again on the Friendly Fields of Strife, I'll be sure to bring it in uh, if you're on the, the Red Deck Wins, because uh, not only do I think it's hilarious to play that against a Red Deck Wins player, it's just, it's just funny, I mean, yeah, maybe it'll get like, you know, Fiery Confluence or like, you know, a Smash of the Rings, but uh, it's just hilarious to me. Um, anyway, uh, very fun deck. Very, very good games to all opponents. I uh, hope everyone had a good time, and I uh, hope to see everyone back uh, next week, and hopefully there's more folks. Um, if you are interested in this format, uh, it's 100-card singleton. Uh, we play in a PRE. It's a free event uh, run off of gathering.com. It's called uh, the Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I say again, it's gathering.com. The host is ML Berlin. Um, and if you go to gathering.com, you can register for the event there, as well as look at the uh, first page of the MTG Salvation link that's there. Uh, to uh, get a grasp of the rules. Uh, so you'll see we're not playing a lot, a lot of certain cards in here. Like, there's no, like, Lion's Eye Diamond. There's no, like, you know, Ancestral Refall, Black Lotus. There's a ban list in this format. Um, and actually, it makes it very hard to play this style of deck. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we found a pretty good way to do it. Um, I think this 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 deck's probably within two to three cards. Um, but I could be wrong on that. I mean, someone may be able to build it better. You know, I think there's definitely a route to go in the green realm. Like, I think you can go green with it. Um, or green white, and I think if you went green white, um, if you went five color, you go green white. In addition to the Grixis colors, um, you can definitely do like the Angel's Grace, like Temps um, style deck. Um, you know, Phyrexian Unlife, all, all those cards, um, as well as um, you know. So there's other options in green and white, like Mir uh, Mirari's, uh, not Mirari's Guile, Mirari's or Mir Mirari's Wake, and yeah, Mirari's Wake, and then uh, Heartbeat of Spring, uh, which is essentially a green copy of Mana Flare. Um, you know, not to mention, like, bigger ones, like, you know, you have, like, doubling, not doubling season, but, like, uh, I forget the name of the card. It's a six-mana card that doubles all your mana sources uh, when they tap. Um, but there, there's a lot of options in green. Plus, you have the fast fast mana off of, like, you know, Search for the Morrow, all that kind of stuff. So you can get to a high land count a lot faster. Um, but I, I kind of found the five-color version of this, which I've tried. Actually, it's sitting right here. It's called the Perfect Storm Greed Remix. Um, is um, it, It's just too much. It, it, it doesn't run. Um, it beats itself more often than not. Whereas this deck, I think, actually tends to run very well right now. Um, like I said, the, the next on the chopping block is probably Chrome Mox and Pen Pentad Prism. Uh, Lotus Petal is just generally great in the matches you want it for Doomsday Piles because it's that one extra mana you don't have. Um, so a very fun deck. Uh, hope to see you um, at the next 100-card Singleton event. Um, it happens at 3.30 or 15.30 every Saturday. 
um, Eastern Standard Time, and you can register for the event, like I said, on gathering.com. All right, I hope you enjoyed the matches and the recording, and uh, take care.